Do you worry about the security of your network? Is your current firewall leaving you vulnerable to cyber threats? Introducing PFSense, the ultimate firewall and routing solution. PFSense is an open source software that provides powerful firewall capabilities, allowing you to protect your network from malicious attacks. With PFSense, you can easily control and monitor inbound and outbound traffic, ensuring that only authorized users have access to your network. But PFSense is more than just a firewall. It's a complete routing solution that can handle all your networking needs. Whether you're managing multiple WAN connections, setting up virtual private networks, or implementing load balancing, PFSense has got you covered. One of the key advantages of PFSense is its flexibility. It can be installed on a variety of hardware platforms, from dedicated appliances to virtual machines. This means you can customize PFSense to fit your specific environment and budget. PFSense also offers a user-friendly web interface, making it easy for network administrators to configure and manage their firewall and routing settings. No need for complex command line configurations. Whether you're running a small home network or a large enterprise, PFSense has the scalability and performance to meet your needs. Its robust features and constant community updates ensure that you stay ahead of emerging security threats. So if you're ready to take control of your network security, upgrade to PFSense today. Visit our website to download this powerful open source software for free. So let's see now from where and how we will download one and in the next step we will see how to install it successfully in this case I will use Proxmox VMware. So viewers you can now see that I'm on the home page of my proxy virtual environment and from there you can see that I downloaded the ISO that I needed, the downloaded ISO that I've uploaded here, in case you want to set up directly on your computer. You have to make a bootable device and to make that book table device you can do the work through a software called Rufus. So if I make a video about this topic now, this video will be much bigger, so for the purpose of brevity, I am scripting how to make a bootable drive in this video. I'm back on my home screen since I'm not going to create a bootable drive I'm going to install my virtual environment directly so I'm going to show you how to start the installation. Everything shown here will be the same as installing with a bootable drive but it's going to be more on VMware a basic idea of how you would complete or configure your setup. At the top you will see a button labeled create VM to start it. Next an option will appear where you will name your virtual machine. The ISO file you downloaded should be specified here. Here you can see the file I downloaded here. After this, there is no need to make any changes in the option, we will move to the next option by keeping it in the same state. The next option is very important here you will be asked how much space you are creating for configuration, here you will select a space as per your requirement where you can complete all the activities as per your requirement, as I am making the tutorial. I am not making any changes here. Now you can see on the screen here you update the configuration as you need because I don't know what kind of computer you are using or what kind of virtual configuration you are using so I am doing some configuration and showing you where you need the tutorial. Where can you update the configuration? So far you can see that the creation of our virtual machine is complete so let's now see if our virtual machine is ready to boot. So now we can see that our machine has booted up nicely and now it's time to see if the installation can be completed properly. Now what you see on your screen is copyright and distribution notice here you have to close your eyes and click on accept. In the next option you can see welcome message and it says installation here we have to click OK. In the next option we can see what is written map selection and there we will click on simply select option without changing anything. In the next option we can see what partition related directives there we will do ok without changing anything. The option you see now is ZFS configuration and then installation process with installation. The option you see now is written ZFS configuration and then it says stripe no redundancy I will select this option and click OK. The option you see now is written ZFS configuration and then it says my yes disk name here press space key to select it and a star will appear inside the bracket then click OK. 
The option you see now is ZFS configuration and then there is a notice called last chance here you have to select yes option and click. If you can do all this correctly then it will take some time for the FI system to copy so here you have to wait patiently until the complete work is done. Now on your screen you will see a notice called manual condition here you will click on yes option and then after next option you will click on reboot option there. Viewers you have seen here that the system is taking some time to reboot, in this case I have forwarded a bit first, it may take some time in your case. In this case, I am being asked whether I will make a VLAN, in this case my answer will be no, I will not make any VLAN. Right here I'm being asked if I know the name of a one interface, if I don't know I can select it via auto detection or I can type in the name I have here. After the LAN interface name is set you will be asked if you want to proceed, in which case you enter Y here. After reaching this option, it will take some time for the configuration to be set, in that case, wait for a while and you will see that the configuration has reached the final stage after waiting. After coming till now you will assume all your configuration is done only you need to configure IP so here you can see option 1 to 16 from there we will press 2. First. You will be asked whether you want to set dynamic IP, in which case you have to choose no here, I press in here to choose no. In this case, when you go to RP configuration, you must configure with static IP in that case, and in that case, you need to know the subnet and default gateway. Through these, you can configure your IP here, and after configuring IPv4, it will ask you to configure IPv6. You can ignore it in IPv6 configuration. In my case I am ignoring IPv6 forest interface dynamic connection configuration, next I am asked if I want to enable dynamic connection for my one connection, in which case I press dynamic connection and no. After that SIDM asked for the web configuration protocol in which case I press yes for the yes indicator and enter. Then you can see an IP is showing here and it's telling me to access the web so let's see if we can access the web interface with the IP. Now I'm going to enter here and then go through a browser to see if I can log in and get into the user interface. Here I am trying to log in through that IP from browser and here it says default IP which I set through one should be used here and through login which is default login user ID password should enter here for some reason if you can't remember what the default ID password is, you can reset it from the system. I will write here on the screen what will be the default ID password. Viewers you can see here that we have logged in and our installation is done properly and on the welcome screen you will be given some default navigation through which you will do the setup installation as I am making a tutorial here so I am not serious or professional any setup here. I only made this video to show you how to install it. Hope I have been able to explain you how to download an ISO and from there you can properly install this application inside your system but if anyone has any problem to understand then definitely let me know through comments and I will try my best to help you. As it is a professional router OS software through which you can perform all the tasks related to firewall and security of your home and office, it is a very complex software with many options, so it is almost impossible to show its details through a video, so I will give you a little overview here. Try to show what's inside, this router has all the options that every other firewall router has in this vest. You can see I have tried to show you one by one, hope you can install it yourself and explore it better, then please let me know. Leave a comment if you like my videos. Here you can see what's inside the system tab. Here you can see what's inside the interface tab. But here's the thing to say, since I've installed it inside a virtual environment, 
you can't see the interface properly because your physical driver interface will show up here. Here you can see your firewall related components through these firewall components you need to complete your firewall configurations. Here you can see many components or models such as service, VPN, status, diagnostics, help menu and many more and you will get many more types of detailed options here. So I hope you can see them in detail in our video if, if you like then subscribe button and stay with us.